This was the headline on the Drudge Report website uh, last October, just a couple of weeks ahead of the presidential election. Fox News Tonight! Tune in, exclusive. We have found something that is going to blow your mind about this president who you thought you knew. Yeah, sure, you think you know what President Obama sounds like when he talks about race. But on Fox News tonight, we have got Barack Obama's other race speech. Dun, dun, dun. Tune in. Tune in. It's the smoking gun. That, that was the headline on the conservative website, the Drudge Report, just a couple of weeks before the presidential election. And so everybody tuned in to see what the big secret was, the big reveal. And Fox News played President Obama's secret, bombshell, other, devastating race speech. And it turned out to be just a speech that the president gave in 2007 uh, at a major university, which everybody covered at the time and which made no ripple in the news at the time because it was not actually anything newsworthy. The right was super excited that that was going to change everything for the presidential election, but it was a dead. Nothing happened. And this kind of happens all the time during this presidency. Um, in the summer of 2008, the right claimed to have another smoking gun that was going to change everything. It was uh, the Michelle Obama hates white people tape. Remember that? Shocking evidence of First Lady Michelle Obama or would be First Lady Michelle Obama. She won't be now. It's her on tape saying the word whitey. And she wasn't talking about whitey bulger. It's the release of the hate whitey tape that was imminent was going to totally, totally change the election. Uh, since nobody has ever seen the infamous Michelle Obama hate whitey tape, on account of the fact that it does not exist, we will have to just have this stand in for that imaginary tape instead. Then there was the time in 2010 when Republican Congresswoman Michelle Bachman insisted the president's trip to India was costing $200 million a day which, if it were remotely true, would be less like funding a presidential trip abroad and more like funding a full-blown war. The $200 million a day trip to India thing was not true, even though Michelle Bachman said it. I know that is shocking to hear. There has been no, no smoking gun, right? Not with the president's other race speech and not with the fake whitey tape that never existed. Not with the $200 million a day trip to India. They, they thought a lot of these things were going to be the end for this presidency, for that candidate. There's no way Obama can go another day. We've got the thing. Now they've got a new one. Is there now a smoking gun in the IRS scandal? This man, former IRS Commissioner Douglas Shulman, visited the White House, ready, 157 times. Incredible. Incredible. The IRS Commissioner visiting the White House 157 times. Are you ready, America? Is there now a smoking gun? There is not now a smoking gun. It turns out that the former IRS commissioner was cleared to visit the White House or the executive office building 157 times in case he wanted to attend various meetings about health reform and stuff. They put his name on the list in case the IRS commissioner wanted to attend. His name was at the gate. Ultimately, the only available data on this that actually show him going to the White House complex, the only available data on this show him going to the whole White House complex, which includes the White House and the executive office buildings there, 11 times. The publicly available arrival and departure information only shows that he attended 11 meetings over four years. Is it obscene that the commissioner of the IRS, who was, by the way, appointed by George W. Bush, apparently had an average of two or three meetings a year inside the whole White House complex over the course of four years? Is that a smoking gun scandal? At Fox News, that's a smoking gun scandal. This is, this is what your uncle who watches Fox News all day has been screaming at the television recently, in case you couldn't make out the words while he was screaming them. This is what he's on about. Fox News leading in prime time late last week with this smoking gun about the IRS commissioner going to the White House 157 times. On Friday morning, Garantz Frank Ruta at The Atlantic magazine uh, ended this story. Um, blew it up by noting the buzz-killing small detail that the story was not true, that he had not been there 157 times, like Fox News was saying. But Fox News has now reacted to the story being debunked by continuing to lead with it as a smoking gun story. They have decided that this is just too good a story to give up on just because it's not true. We are not implying, insinuating, hinting 
or doing anything else other than reporting the facts. And so far, we've been dead on. Last week, we told you that former IRS chief Douglas Shulman visited the Obama White House 157 times. The IRS boss visits the White House 157 times. That's a big story. Look, too. he shouldn't have been there that many times. This is an independent agency, and being too close to the White House is a problem for the IRS. Why do you think he was here? We'll speculate a little bit. I, I, I don't know. Why do you, do you I, have I, no I, idea why he was I, here? I, the Obama administration continues to say the president had nothing to do with the IRS scandal. However, we still don't know much about former IRS chief Douglas Shulman visiting the White House 157 times. We still don't know. We do not know much. We do not, for example, know that the idea that he was there 157 times has been debunked. We don't know that. We have been very busy. There was a weekend. It was hot. Spent a whole lot of time reading this completely different thing about these little penguins in Japan that they dressed up in dashikis to greet some foreign dignitaries who were visiting. It was really hard for the little penguins when they were wearing their little dashikis to go down the stairs in their little shirts. They had to bend over and look at their feet. But they did it. Yeah, so I spent some time reading about that. I spent a lot of time, actually, on that. Also, I, um, I went to the farmer's market. I washed my hair. I, I really haven't had enough time to read about the whole IRS commissioner going to the White House story being debunked. So I'm just going to keep doing the story over and over and over again for a few more days. It still sounds really good to me. It still sounds like a really big story. You might have seen this week that a college Republican group uh, put out a pretty heavily researched report about the perceptions of the two parties right now in our country um, among young people. It's about a 100-page report based significantly on focus groups led by Republican pollsters and consultants. When the Republicans asked these focus groups of young people to name Democratic Party leaders... Quote, they named prominent former or currently elected officials, Nancy Pelosi, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Obama, Kennedy, Gore. When those same respondents were asked to name Republican Party leaders, they focused heavily on media personalities and commentators. Bill O'Reilly, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck. So the identifiable leaders of the Democratic Party are prominent elected officials who work in governing, in policy. The identifiable leaders of the Republican Party are talk show hosts, who are not elected and who do not work in governing and who have no responsibility for policy. And that is not a problem if the party itself doesn't really see itself as doing policy. Today, the number two Republican in Congress unveiled the Republican Party's latest big idea in Washington. It is a new website called cosponsor.gov. The idea is that if you like an idea, you can go to the Republican's new website, give them your personal information, and then you can become a fake cosponsor of that idea that you like. What this uh, website and program will allow are folks uh, throughout the country uh, to go to cosponsor.gov, sign up to be a cosponsor of any bill that's submitted here in Washington. Uh, now, to be clear, you will not actually be a cosponsor of anything if you sign up at the Republicans' new website. You will be a pretend cosponsor. So there's that. But at least Eric Cantor will get your email address in the process. This follows on the Republican majority leader's last big idea in Washington, which was to let you fake vote to cut things in Washington. Again, it was not actual voting for actual cutting by actual people with the power to do that. It was just a fake way for you to pretend to do that. It was a fake way they cooked up so you could fake do that and also give Eric Cantor your email address. In the actual House of Representatives where these guys work, the votes they are actually taking in Congress are about what you would expect from people who think of policy in this way. This week, they have scheduled two separate votes on defunding the group ACORN, for example. The group ACORN has not existed for three years now. It is hard to defund and punish something that doesn't actually exist and hasn't for years. Actually, it's impossible to do that. It's like trying to divide by zero. But still, it's fun. So House Republicans are voting on that twice this week. And, of course, there was the 37th time that they voted to repeal Obamacare. They do not repeal Obamacare when they take that vote. It has no effect, but they have done it 37 times now. And why not? If one of the two political parties in our country is not a policy-based thing anymore... If the leaders of the party are talk show hosts, if the only point of Congress is stuff that helps with messaging and collecting email addresses for future fundraising, 
that probably has a lot of different big picture consequences for our democracy that are too depressing to think about on a Tuesday. But in the short run, it means that when actual policy does come up, when policy decisions do have to be made and they have to be made in Washington, you never really know what's going to happen. Things can suddenly get very unpredictable, at least on the Republican side, when policy descends. Por ejemplo, bearing down on us like a freight train right now is a real deadline having to do with college that's going to affect millions of Americans in a very direct way. If you have federal student loans for college, at the end of this month, for a policy reason, your loan rates are going to double from 3.4%, which is what they are right now, to 6.8%. That's going to happen all at once at the end of this month. Bang. That's bad for millions of people. And the Republicans do not want to fix that problem in the way that President Obama and the Democrats want to fix that problem. But this is a policy thing. And you really never know anymore what's going to happen when Republicans in Congress end up having to talk about real policy, about real things instead of ACORN or repeal Obamacare or something, right? It is very hard to guess what's going to come out of their mouths when it's a real policy matter that they have to make a real policy decision on. But of all the things that anybody might have guessed might have come out of Mitch McConnell's mouth when he tried to talk about this issue, I think nobody could have guessed that this would have been what would come out of his mouth. In Obamacare, uh, the Democratic majority, without a single Republican vote, abolished the student loan program. They'd have to pay back more at a higher rate, all related to something young people had nothing to do with, which was the passage of Obamacare. Student loan rates are going to rise because Obamacare. Health reform abolished the student loans, America. Obamacare also made it rain this weekend. And yeah, you know what you did, Obamacare. You know what you did in Hong Kong. That's why everybody's marching against Obamacare in the streets, in the zoos, or whatever. The Republican Party has a nonsense problem when it comes to policy, and it comes right from the top. And if you do not like policy, that's fine. That is fine, for example, for any number of popular conservative TV shows who are really in a leadership role in that party. But in Washington, the fact that one of the two parties is just unsuited for policy at this time, that is not their strong suit, that right now is a problem. Because that party has also decided that there is a policy that they would like to pass. The party decided immediately after this last election that they lost so badly that they could never win another election again if such a giant proportion of minority voters kept voting against them. To try to repair their image with Latino voters in particular, Republicans decided right after the last election that they must stop standing in the way of a reform of our nation's policies on immigration. They decided they have got to find some approach to reforming the immigration system that Republicans can support, or their party is going to go into a demographic death spiral from which there is no escape. They do not much like policy in general. They are not built for policy at this point in the Republican Party history, but they need this one policy. For purely political reasons, if nothing else, they need this one policy. Now, on all other policy, Democrats are in the lead. Democrats control the White House and the Senate. The Republicans in the House have been very open about the fact that they do not want to lead on any major policy. They say they keep saying over and over again, we'd like the Senate to go first. And meanwhile, in the House, they just keep voting to defund ACORN over and over again. They're not really doing anything in the House. So Democrats are really doing everything on policy in Washington, but on immigration, the Democrats are trying to let Republicans find a way to lead so the Republicans can find a way to support something. A policy. Just the one. Can they do it? Do you believe that immigration, as it looks right now, will have the 60 votes necessary to move to the House? No. No. No, they cannot do it. Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida on Fox News today explaining that immigration reform is going nowhere, that Republicans just don't support it. No, it, and I think even the Democrats would concede that. Actually, the Democrats have been saying that they thought they did have the votes. They thought it was going to pass. Harry Reid's been saying he's got the votes. Even Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said today that they had the votes, that it was going to pass. They got 60 votes. But Marco Rubio, who is supposed to be the great Republican champion of this issue, says no, it is not going to happen. He's counting, and he cannot count to 60 on this one. This is the one policy they want, the one thing they are geared up to actually even talk about and everything. And it, too, is now falling apart? 